Many fabrications were added. We talked about different types of fabrications. I will talk about a fabrication in the next podcast how one personality was reduced and other personality was elevated. We talked about the age of Aisha and how age of Aisha was intentionally reduced to nine years, which continuously haunts the Muslims who believe in those narrations, knowing that those narrations are false by historical accounts, but they cannot get over it because they are part of the books which were written by those sponsored by the government that government which was fabricating these narrations in the factory of fabrication during the time of Banu Umayya that is what happens when people ignore the truth that is what happens when people do not stand up with justice do not follow the right path do not follow the path that god has shown them through miracles through signs and that is exactly what happened the prophet one day he was sitting with his companions near a, on a mountain near a cave with some of the companions and at that point he saw imam hassan salam, very young very young walking gently onto the mountain when he was walking onto the mountain the prophet told people that he is being guided by angel jibrail and then the prophet said soon you will come you will come to see a person, one of the Bedouins who will talk to me in a very rude manner. And you all will get angry. People said, we started waiting to see what happens if someone comes or not. And then they soon saw a Bedouin approach the Prophet and rudely interferes in the conversation and says, Oh Muhammad, I do not trust you. I have questions for you. And I will not go back until unless you prove that you are the prophet or I will show everyone that you're not a prophet. When that happened, people who were sitting around, they got angry. They said, why is this person talking like this? They stood up to counter that person. But what happened was the prophet said, let him talk. And then the Prophet pointed towards his grandson, Imam Hassan salam, and said, Oh Hassan, please reply to this person. The Bedouin said, how can I talk to this person, this child who doesn't even know how to walk properly? Imam Hassan salam, stood up and said, Oh Bedouin, watch your tongue because you're talking to the Hujja of Allah. You have talked in the improper way to my grandfather, the prophet of God. Let me answer you all. Let me answer all of your questions. But before I answer your question, let me tell you one thing. That few days ago, you decided among your clan that you will go and kill the prophet. And prophet Muhammad does not have any son and the clans of Arab will disperse and you will be a hero and everyone will be happy and no one will take revenge of Muhammad. So you set out with a spear in your hand from your home. As you set out along the way, your eyesight was taken and you were lost and you were going right and left and then there was a hailstorm. There was a thunderstorm that took you and you had no idea where you were going. You were trying to find a path and you couldn't find a path, but your eyesight was lost. So you walked and walked and walked in that storm for a couple of days till the point that you reached this point. When you reached this point, you found out that the prophet of God is sitting in this place. So you came and now because you did not have the same courage, your eyesight was lost. You said that you're going to ask questions and make the prophet seem lower. Demean the prophet. That person said, child, tell me this. How did you know all of this? Because this is exactly what happened to me. And then he said, 
I want to ask you one question. Tell me the word with which I can become a Muslim. The kalma with which I can become a Muslim because if the grandson being so young has so much knowledge from the unseen that is only possible with the sign of God. So the prophet is the true prophet of God. He is the grandfather of this grandson. And then there is another event from the life of Imam Hassan salam. That when the peace treaty was signed, Muawiyah was in Medina. He actually gave every single person in Medina gifts. So from the morning till evening, he kept on giving people gifts and some money and some other things, whatever they were asking for. He had sent for Imam Hassan salam to come over. He came at the time when his court was about to end in the evening. So Muawiyah said, Oh Hassan, you've come this late because you think that my wealth will end by the time you come. And from the morning till the evening, he has been giving out all this wealth to the people. So his wealth will end. That's why you've come this late, Hassan. Imam Hassan didn't say anything. So then Muawiyah said, Oh Hassan, I'm going to give you something special. His person to actually bring equivalent amount of all the money and wealth that he has distributed from morning till the evening and give it to Imam Hassan. Imam Hassan did not say anything. He was just sitting over there. When he was about to leave, he stood up from the place where he was sitting. One of the servants of Muawiyah brought the shoes of Imam Hassan salam, and he just fixed the shoes in front of Imam Hassan. Imam Hassan said, because you have done this much for us, you just fixed my shoes. All of this wealth that I have been given, you take all of this with you. And Imam Hassan said, I am the son of Fatima. Dear brothers and sisters, there is a message hidden in here that the Alabayt do not take anything with them. They repay every single deed that you do in their path. They do not hold anything. They will repay every single thing that you will do for their cause. And that is a promise of God that Allah never takes anyone's Hassan. He is the one who returns the Hassan with Hassan. So anyone who makes an effort in the cause of Ahlul Bayt in the cause of those who were oppressed, in the cause of those whose successorship was taken, in the cause of those who were the rightful successors because of whom the, the blessings of Allah would have come in this world and whose successorship was taken. If we make an effort, God's blessings will come. They will come in this world and they will come in the hereafter. So my dear brothers and sisters, I was asking myself that, okay, people ignored the signs. Not only ignored the signs, people actually went against the, the progeny of the Prophet. Not only go against the progeny of the Prophet, they actually killed the progeny of the Prophet. Not only killed the progeny of the Prophet, they fabricated narrations to demean and reduce the status of the progeny of the Prophet. But what was the cause? What changed? Considering all the world events that we see right now, what is the reason why we did not make a difference? Why we could not stand up with Imam Hassan? What happened? What was wrong with those people at the time who after seeing all of these signs, they still ignored? And that is a very profound question that I was asking myself. And then I came to this answer.